On this edition of Oxford News This Week, a new market manager with a sign of a dream is about to happen. A look through the lens, of course, we'll do that in our sports. And in our last story, birthdays with the help from friends. That on this special edition of Oxford News This Week. Welcome back to Oxford News This Week. DTE rates and the planning of spring cleaning were on the agenda during the March meeting of the Addison Township Board of Trustees. Addison Township Supervisor Bruce Pearson recently attended a meeting that consisted of the Oakland County political officials, which included Oxford, Addison, and Leonard Supervisors. One of the topics that were brought up and debated, prospect of DTE raising its rates here in Michigan. Well, I had my meeting uh, today with um uh, all the supervisors and uh, in uh, Oakland County, and we also had all of our uh, congresswomen and men and our senators and uh, our state reps and uh, state senators also, and uh, we had a, a lot of conversations. Uh, one of them was about DTE, the outages again. Um, I've been in contact, of course, with uh, Leif Clark, who is our representative for the uh, for the electricity, and as you know, we were out of electricity. All of M24 was out of electricity. There's a lot going on. There's some hearings. And now uh, DTE would like uh, me to uh, come and testify that, we, that uh, we need to raise our rates so that they can give us better service. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, but I'm not, I'm not falling for that trick again, okay, because you know, every time they say, just give us more money and we'll improve the system. That, that's not the issue. We keep giving them raises and they don't improve the system, so. It was also stated at the Oakland County meeting that Michigan has the highest electricity rates in the Midwest, which uh, left several attendees, including Supervisor Pearson, wondering why that was. Right now, uh, Senator Rumfeld uh, was at the meeting and he explained to us that uh, Michigan has the highest electricity in all of the Midwest mm -hmm. and we're rated the worst in liability. And DTE's response to that was that it's because of the weather in Michigan. Oh, yeah. And they said, well, that's funny because Minnesota <laughs> is uh, number two in the lowest cost and they're number one in the reliability and their weather is more severe than ours. So. Uh, I, I just don't buy that. Also discussed at the Addison Township March meeting, the township will provide dumpsters for the spring cleanup at the Addison Township offices, and that will begin on Saturday, May 13th, and the service provided from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., rain or shine, to the Addison Township residents. Only Supervisor Pearson reminds residents that hazardous materials, including items such as paint cans, will not be accepted unless certain guidelines are followed. Um, talk to our vendors, one of the, the big hang-ups is the paint, okay, paint is kind of a hard thing to handle, but um, I was advised that if you put cat litter in the paint cans or sand and you let it dry, it then is no longer a hazardous uh, chemical, it, it can be put into a regular garbage can and, and disposed of. So I think the township, to lower our expenses, We'll have to send out the message to everybody that, uh, that we're not accepting paint unless it's been dried out and then it can go into the regular garbage, okay? For more information regarding what will be accepted at the Addison Spring Cleanup in May, contact their township office, 248-628-3317. Welcome to Tim Davids, uh, his new vision, uh, the new Davis, or should I say Davis, Davis Family Farm Market opening on Seymour Lake Park that will happen on May 13th, a Saturday. Davids is the new market manager. He previously oversaw the South Lion Farmers Market and Artesians Market from 2017 to 2021. A $100,000 grant from the Oakland County Parks and Rec helped fund the pavilion's construction. Oxford Township's new farmer's market will be open every Saturday from May 13th all the way through October 28th, pending, again, vendor availability. Hours of operation on those days would be 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
If you'd like to contact the new market manager, please call him at 947-207-9477. Or you can send an email to farmersmarket at oxfordparksandrec.org. Change is in the air, and it's just not a spring breeze. Oxford Township will hold its first public hearing on whether or not to change the way trash is being picked up at, on the April 12th meeting at the Lake Point Community Church at 1550 West Drainer Road. Using the Michigan Intergovernmental Trade Network, MITN for short, the township specifications were put out for bid to the contractors who will hold uh, the, the whole community waste hauling system would be just one. On the 1st of March, the committee accepted three proposals having a single hauler in the township. It will also be safer for township residents by reducing the number of waste hauling trucks in the neighborhoods. At the April 12th meeting, the new single hauler ordinance will be introduced. If the first reading is approved by the township board, then the second reading will be May 10th. The township ordinance will follow if approved by the township board. If all goes as planned, they hope to contract a single trash hauler by July 1st. The uh, new hauler will handle collecting the old trash ca carts and delivering new ones. Also, Noel uh, told the first 150 days of the new contract, a representative from the hauling company will be stationed in the township hall to answer any potential customer questions and concerns. Well, who doesn't like the adventure of a treasure hunt? Well, members of the Oxford and Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority think many people do and have made April a month for such an adventure. Starting on Saturday and going all the way through the entire month of April, visitors in the downtown can look for clues, rubber stamps at various businesses and locations. You'll find uh, clues. She said, uh, according to the uh, website, uh, atlasquest.com, you will need to create a, a trail name and play along. Once you find the letterbox, you open it up, and then using your rubber stamp, stamp their logbook, and then stamp your logbook. If you do, uh, don't have a rubber stamp or an ink pad, just sign your name with a pen. According to the Atlas Quest website, letterboxing combines artistic ability with the treasure hunting in parks and forests that the whole family can actually enjoy. Participants seek out hidden letter boxes by following clues uh, to their prize rubber stamp. Often hand uh, the uh, stamp to into one uh, personal logbook each week. A $10 gift certificate will be hidden in random boxes on the random days between the uh, two towns. There will be about 20 letter boxes hidden in Lake Orion. Residents Teresa Rutt hand carved rubber stamps. Uh, the uh, Oxford and Lake Orion DDAs, Oxford had two stamps representing the downtown business district and the original electricity, uh, electric trolley in Oxford and then the Flint Limited for the Lake Orion. She carved a historic Lake Orion police car and the entrance to the amusement park, which it was all part of Lake Orion early on in the uh, Lake Orion's history. And two bonus stamps said Lake Orion DDA Executive Director Molly Lalone, the Lake Orion Dragon and the Oxford Wildcat. The trolley between Oxford and Lake Orion will be running Fridays 5 to 9 and Saturdays 3 to 9. This is a fun scavenger hunt uh, type of activity, so they hope that everybody will take part. Kelly Westbrook said this is the second year for the event. Uh, both DDAs are very proud and happy, and hopefully this will be a success as well. Last week, students of Leonard Elementary School had several extra treat. Uh, teachers dressed up their favorite book characters pictured here are Mar uh, Ms. Marcy Benson, or Bensman, as Little Red Riding Hood, and the second grade teacher, Mrs. Jennifer Coggins, as a dog man. Again, uh, we thank the uh, photo, courtesy of the uh, Leonard Elementary School. Again, it was a fun day had by all. Oxford Seniors got a new grill thanks to Meyer. Barbecue season is just around the corner. Hope Senior Apartments on West Trainer Road and thanking the Oxford Meyer store, the seniors now have a brand new five burner propane grill on which they can prepare their favorite meats, veggies, Hope uh, Social Committee, uh, which consists of Brian Smith, the president, Secretary Babette Sullivan, and Treasurer Barbara Dismore, decided it was time to replace the community uh, aging grill uh, purchasely purchased at a garage sale. Two representatives from the Oxford Meyer store, Charles Vincent and uh, Brent Aliff, uh, were there to uh, present the uh, grill on behalf of Meyer. They visited the Hope Senior on uh, this last Wednesday afternoon to join with the residents for a potluck dinner prior to the dining and Hope residents expressed their gratitude and happiness about the new grill. Every weekday between 30 and 40 senior citizens in the Oxford Addison community get a special delivery. 
and that is Meals on Wheels. The delivery volunteers deliver a meal with a gift of a smile. According to Reynolds, Meals on Wheels helps homebound seniors who are unable to prepare their own meals. It can be an absolute essential service for many older adults, providing a hot meal, a friendly visitor, and someone to check in just to see if they're okay on a weekday basis. The program is available to people of 60 years or older and, no financial, uh, and there is no financial eligibility for requirements. Instead, eligibility is based on whether or not someone can leave their home without assistance. It encourages independence for those who wish to remain in their home as long as the possible Meals on Wheels food is prepared in the kitchen of the Older Persons Commission in Rochester and sent to the Oxford United Methodist Church on East Burdick Street by a refrigerated heated van. Again, we want to uh, thank them for their uh, gallant efforts on Meals on Wheels, helping a lot of folks. If you'd like more information, contact them at 248-236-9260. You can leave a message, uh, again, in regards to uh, volunteering for Meals on Wheels. It's also a, a very good cause, helping out a lot of people. In a segment inspired by C.J. Carnacchio, it's Behind the Lens. We are going to take a look at uh, something very special. I'll let our own Terry Styles describe this to you. Oxford is full of historic architecture. Its buildings, bridges, barns, homes, and churches create a tangible link to its past. It's our heritage to be studied, cherished, and preserved. We enjoy highlighting everything that makes our township such a unique and beautiful place. Enjoy. Designed by Detroit architect J. Philip McDonnell, the house at 751 West Drainer Road was built in 1929. It was originally part of an estate owned by Arthur H. Buell, a prominent Detroit businessman. After General Motors executive Marvin E. Coyle purchased the estate in September 1936, the house underwent extensive remodeling and was known as the Lakeview Manor for many years. This schoolhouse, located at 2700 North Oxford Road, was built in 1915. At the time it closed in 1960s, it was the last operating one-room schoolhouse in Oakland County. It is now a private residence. The Octagon House, located at 2246 North Oxford Road, was built around 1850 by Henry Frink, a farmer and master carpenter of Wyoming County, New York, who settled in Oxford in March of 1839. Frink lived from 1809 to 1889, and the house joined the Michigan Historical Marker Program in 1990 and is still a private residence. We hope you enjoyed this architectural tour through Oxford. Photos and information courtesy of CJ Carnacchio, Grants and Communications Manager for Oxford Township. Once again, Oxford Television's Terry Styles, our manager doing the narration there over some of CJ Carnacchio's pictures and yes, a lot of great places around here in Oxford to see. If you do have a picture or a snap you'd like to uh, send to us, feel free to send it to me at jimhughes at odyssey.com. I'll have a different email very shortly, but we're going to have to use that one right now. Maybe you'll see your snap or picture behind the lens. Coming up next, Dave Kenny will have Auto Talk and Science in the News. I'll have a few more segments. Once again, thanking our own Terry Styles for a trip around Oxford the historic way. We'll be back with more on Oxford News this week. Your Marine Corps way of life is to defend the American way of life. Every day, we take a stand for our nation, 
for each other, for us all. The few, the proud, the Marines. Welcome to this edition of Auto Talk. I'm Dave Kenny, and these stories are taken from Automotive News, and they're both about recalls. Honda Motor Company is recalling more than 330,000 vehicles for side view mirrors that may detach. The recall includes 2020 to 2022 Honda Odysseys and Passports, 2020 to 2021 Honda Pilots and Ridgelines. Heating pads behind the side view mirrors can lose adhesion, causing the glass to potentially detach according to a Honda recall document. Detached mirror glass can reduce driver visibility and increase the risk of a crash according to NHTSA. Affected models were produced at Honda's plant in Lincoln, Alabama, Honda spokesman Chris Martin told Automotive News. Martin said he's not aware of any vehicles affected outside the U.S. and Canada. Honda first received a market quality report that showed a potential trend of mirror vibration in December of 2018 and began investigating. The trend increased in October of 2020. The side view mirror supplier changed the heater pad and mirror backplate adhesive tape in July of 2021. In November of 2021, Honda received a safety related market quality report of the mirror falling off and began a further investigation. On March 9, 2023, Honda determined a safety de defect existed and decided to conduct a recall. Honda has received 71 warranty claims related to the issue with no injuries reported. Dealers will replace both left and right side view mirrors. Owners will be notified by mail beginning May 8th of 2023. And on our next recall, Hyundai, Hyundai that is, Motor America is recalling nearly 568,000 pickups and crossovers in the U.S. that are potentially equipped with trailer harness modules that could catch fire. The recall covers 2019 to 2023 Santa Fe midsize crossovers, including 2021 to 2023 hybrids and 2022 to 2023 plug-in hybrids, as well as 2022 to 2023 Santa Cruz compact pickups. Hyundai is advising owners to park their vehicles outside and away from structures until a repair is completed. Those vehicles might be equipped with an accessory tow hitch assembly available for purchase through Hyundai or a dealership. Water accumulation on the tow hitch harness module, printed circuit board or PCB, may cause an electrical short, which can result in a fire according to a recall report made public. The Automaker told NHTSA it was aware of six incidents potentially related to the faulty component in the U.S., including one report of fire and five reports of thermal damage isolated to the trailer harness module. There were no confirmed crashes or injuries related to the issue, Hyundai said. A Hyundai spokesman did not immediately respond for a request for comment, however. Korean auto supplier Sege makes the tow hitch module and wiring harness, according to the recall report. As an interim repair, dealers will inspect the module and remove the fuse as necessary. Once the final repair is available, dealers will install a new fuse and wire extension kit. Dealers and owners will be notified starting May 16th. So far this year, Hyundai has issued six recalls affecting more than 843,000 U.S. vehicles, according to NHTSA data. Sibling company Kia America also is recalling about 3,500 Carnival minivans for the same issue. The automaker told NHTSA there have been no injuries or fires uh, or crashes or deaths. The tow hitch harness supplier for the Kia vehicles is Mobis Parts America, according to the recall report. Well, that's it for this edition of Auto Talk. I'm Dave Kenny. Stay tuned to Oxford Community Television. Canine Stray Rescue is Oxford's own local dog rescue. Call them at 248-628-0435 or go to their website, dogsaver.org, and click on the Canine Stray Rescue League link.
On a sunny Monday afternoon in March, about 70 people, family members, friends, coaches, coaches to be gathered outside the, uh, the Oxford High School. Uh, the 11 signees were at the table in alphabetical order. That was actually inside. Nick Champagne signed for hockey with Adrian College. Cohen Eberhard for wrestling with Albion College. Colton Farwell for soccer and Gardner Webb University. Elena Gazinski for cheer with Grand Valley State University. Cam Jarrett for football with Alma College. Alyssa Cool for soccer with Mars uh, Hill University. Caroline Martinez for bowling with uh, Rochester University. Haley May for cheer with Olivet College. Olivia McGuire for cheer at Adrian College. Ethan O'Dowd for hockey at Adrian College. And Owen Schill for baseball with Kalamazoo College. It was a signing day for the athletes. Everybody had a great time. Always a, a testament to the Oxford program uh, with all the signees. Softball and baseball season, we're about to start. If you'd like to sponsor uh, part of our games, it does help us bring all the games to you, the softball, girls softball, and boys baseball, and even the summer league, you can contact our office at 248-628-9658. Ask for Terry Styles or yours truly, Jim Hughes, and we'll see what we can do about setting up a sponsor. Opening day the other day with the Detroit Tigers, always showing a sign of possibility in the sounds of summer with a ballpark Frank, a box of Cracker Jacks, and the sound of a bat as it cracks when hitting a pitch. Here are some of the pictures of past Tiger seasons. Some of our past Tiger seasons, and again, a lot of great pitchers, and yes, baseball season is underway. Uh, that's it with sports. I'll be back with more to close it all out and have last story coming up after this on Oxford News This Week. This is Lomas Brown, ex-Detroit Lion, and you're watching OCTV. That's Oxford Community TV. Check it out. Welcome to Science in the News. I'm Dave Kenny, and this story is taken from New Scientist. Hagfish produce copious amounts of slime when attacked, which chokes predators' gills in a gooey net. Scientists now know that the mucus plays a critical role in hagfish slime's remarkable clogging ability, and fibrous threads keep the slime from washing away. Within a half a second of being provoked, eel-like hagfishes release bundles of fibrous protein threads and mucus from glands along their bodies. The threads spread into an intricate tangle and, in combination with mucus, transform seawater into a thick goo. It has these spider silk-like fibers running throughout it, which give it a strength and toughness that is utterly shocking and surprising, says Douglas Fudge at Chapman University in California. The slime is amazing. To test the clogging power of Pacific hagfish slime, Fudge and his colleagues built a custom slime sieve. They dissolved the slime in water and recorded its weight over time as water drained through the holes below the slower the flow, the greater the clogging power. Then they compared the drain rate of the hagfish slime with that of three other common thickening agents at various concentrations, psyllium husk, xanthan gum, and polyethylene oxide, or PEO. For its weight, hagfish slime was two or three orders of magnitude better at clogging than its competitors. Around 35 milligrams of slime per liter of water produced maximum clogging. The shocking result was that 
Other thickeners are not even close to what hagfish slime is doing in terms of performance, says Fudge. You can have somewhere between 100 times to 1,000 times less hagfish slime to get the same clogging performance as those other materials, he says. When the team removed the threads from the slime in the lab, they were surprised to find that clogging abilities were preserved. The mucus is really doing the heavy lifting when it comes to the clogging performance, says Fudge. That made him wonder, why does hagfish slime have threads at all? In a similar follow-up experiment, the team flushed the mucus-only hagfish slime with seawater. At first, the slime held up in the sieve, but further blasts of water quickly washed it away. When they tried again with slime containing both mucus and threads, the slime stuck around for more than a dozen flushes of seawater. We think that the threads are there to hold the slime in place and to prevent the mucus from dissipating, says Fudge. It's surprising to see how, much, how well mucus can clog even in the absence of threads, says Sarah Shorno at the University of Guelph in Canada, who wasn't involved in the work. It's a fantastic high quality science, she says. Fudge hopes these insights into hagfish slime could bring scientists closer to developing synthetic alternatives to the super strong goo, which could be used in bandages, clothing, and for military defense. Well, that's it for this edition of Science in the News. I'm Dave Kenny. And in our last story, Virginia Greer celebrated a monumental uh, birthday, 98th birthday at Hope Center Senior Apartments. Two uh, scrumptious cakes with a big tub of ice cream of courtesy of the Lake Orion Kroger uh, store and the uh, M24, which is located on M24. Promise team has generously agreed to donate the sweet treats for the uh, Home Senior monthly birthday celebrations. Again, the community is uh, definitely grateful to Kroger. Anytime we celebrate with the community, anytime we can support our community, they said they're going to do that, and that's how they're going to give back to the seniors. A uh, really big thank you to that. Uh, uh, store manager Nicole Davis, who attended the festivities, she'll be there uh, most every month. Residents gather to celebrate their community's birthdays. In addition to honoring uh, our 98th uh, person, uh, Virginia, today uh, the party celebrated some other birthdays in March. Ron Shadowski, 74, Barbara Dismore, 76, and Joyce Stewart, 77. Our last story, wishing you a happy birthday. With that, we thank the news gathering sources of the Oxford Leader, the Oxford Township Facebook. Credits go to CJ Carnacchio for photos and the Oxford Leader. OCTV can be viewed on Spectrum Charter Channel 191, Channel 99 on the ATT UVerse system, YouTube, Rumble, Facebooks, and also it can be downloaded on the Roku app. Watch the uh, programming here on OCTV uh, in many of those platforms. You can also, if you're a local group and you want to create a public service announcement, or have a show idea, contact our office at 248-628-9658. Thanks to producer, director Kyle Snage, videographer Al Campbell, editor Marissa Hariska, uh, program coordinator Dan Zweiss, program director Connie Miller, station manager Terry Stiles for the narration and being our station manager. And again, I'd like to thank uh, Don Rush from the Oxford Leader who did an article on uh, yours truly the other day. And I guess I, I failed to mention in the article, we couldn't do any of this without you and the many staff members that helped me do this OCTV news every week. I want to thank them. And again, I want to thank the Oxford Leader for doing the article. For everyone here at OCTV, I'm Jim Hughes, hoping you have a safe week. And I invite you back next time. And again, we will take a look at Oxford News this week.